So we're at the point in our game where it would be really handy if our player character was able to hit the flying eye while jumping, because the flying eye, obviously, is sometimes above the ground and would be hard to hit with a ground sword swing or a arrow that just goes left or right. So to combat aerial guys like this, we're going to add in two aerial attacks, an attack one and an attack two for the air, which means we're going to need to set up some new colliders for those aerial attacks. And we'll set up the statistics to have new damage values for those attacks. So in the prefab for our player, let's go to animation. And then I'm going to create a new clip here, which will be player air attack one. And then let's put that in characters player right in here. Save it. I'll change the samples to 10. And now let's go up to the art folder, RV Ross Adventurer individual sprites. And let's find our air attack. So we have air attack one, which has four frames here. Let's grab those four frames and I'll drop those into the animation window. So if we zoom in, we can hit play and kind of test our air attack. So let's go ahead and create air attack two now. So create clip player air attack two. And we'll go ahead and hit save. Change the samples to 10. And let's grab the three frames for air attack two. So we can hit play and we can see our air attack two playing out right there. So to continue setting up our attacks in the same manner we were before, we'll just create a couple more child game objects to hold all those attacks. So with Sword Attack 3, for each of them, make sure that the colliders are turned off. So I'm going to take that collider on Sword Attack 3 and turn it off. So let's go ahead and right click on player. So I'll actually duplicate Sword Attack 3 twice here. And then let's rename it Air Attack 1 and then Air Attack 2. So for Air Attack 1, let's go to the animation window. Go to air attack, find the animation frame at 0, 01 for where our hit collider should appear. And then let's go to the inspector and enable our polygon collider so that we can see it. Hit edit and adjust the points for our sword swing shape. So whatever you feel comfortable with is good. I'm going to try to go roughly around the outline of the sword swing without making too many points. Make sure that they don't cross over each other so that you don't get the red line to show up. So everything should be green here. And maybe I'll bring this out a little further. And that should be good for our air attack one. So I'm going to turn off edit collider. I'm going to disable the collider by default. Let's go to the animation window. I'll add a property. Let's find air attack one polygon collider enabled. We're going to make sure it's off on frame zero and then enabled on frame one. After that, disabled again. And all the frames except for where it says zero, 01 should be disabled. So there is our first air attack. Now let's jump to air attack 2 and do the same thing. So I'm going to find the hit frame, which is in this case on frame 0. Let's go to the inspector. Click on air attack 2. I'll hit edit collider. And then let's bring this over to where it makes sense for our sword attack to hit this time. So this should be more of a upwards shape. And let's just grab those lower points to be right about here. Maybe we do want to be able to hit on the lower end as well. So that will roughly be our shape. We can come up here as well. OK, that looks pretty good to me. So let's go to the animation window, add property, scroll down to air attack two, polygon collider enabled. Uh, you can see it's disabled on frame zero by default. So we want to check that to enable it. Then go to frame 01, disable that, and make sure it's disabled for the rest of the shape. Now we can change this to some default animation and just go through all of the polygon colliders on the attacks and make sure they're all disabled by default. Okay, next we just need to set damage for our air attack. So we can see that on the ground, sword attack 1 does 10 damage, sword attack 2 does 15 damage, and sword attack 3 does 25 damage. So you can kind of use whatever values you want for your air attack. If you want it to deal more or less damage, that's fine. That's up to you. I'm going to put 12 for the first attack damage, and I'm going to set 0 for the knockback, at least for now. We can always add a knockback back in later. But the flying enemy ignores knockback the way it's been scripted anyway. If you wanted to add knockback to the flyer, you would just do something very similar to how we set up knockback on the knight, where during the knockback, new rules take control for how the velocity should be set and then you would disable the normal flying for that period of time but for right now we're just going to see if we can get the flyer to take damage from these aerial hits so i'm going to set the knockback to zero 
and the damage to 18 on the second attack. So it's 12, 0, and 18, 0. One last thing to double check is that your air attack transforms are over to the right and roughly centered on the polygon collider shape. So when we reverse our direction, it's going to take everything here and bring it over here uh, when our scale on the parent object goes to negative one. So we do need to still have that offset over to the right. So now that we have the attacks, we need to set up the animator on the player so that we can transition into them. So if we open up the player's animator, we have the ground attacks, player bow, but we need to set up a air attack substate machine, which will be similar to the ground attack substate machine, but we can only get there when we're in the air. So let's right click, create a substate machine, and I'll put it up here above air states. Let's rename it to air attack. I'm going to grab these two animations, control C, jump into air attack, control V to paste them in. Let's make the default entry point the player attack one. Go back out and I'll delete these two animations from the main base layer. So now we need to be able to get to air attack. We can still use the attack trigger, so we don't need to re-script anything about uh, pressing a different key to go to the attack. It's just going to go to an air attack if we happen to be in the air. So from air states, we're going to want another exit transition here if we use the attack trigger. So let's right click from player rising to exit, player falling to exit, click on the transitions. So has exit time is going to be off, transition duration zero, and the condition is going to be the attack trigger. And that's the same thing for both of them. Has exit time off, transition duration zero, and then we hit plus and go to attack. Okay, now that we have a way to leave our air states, we go back up to the base layer. Let's make the transition from air states to air attack. Right click on air states to make transition to air attack. I guess for now we'll just use the air attack machine directly, which means that we'll go into the default state in the air attack. And here for the condition, we add a plus and make it the attack trigger. For air attack back to air states, make transition back to air states, state machine, air states. And this will not have any conditions, so it will happen automatically when we leave the air attack substate machine. Okay, let's jump into air attack now, and uh, we can move this base layer piece over here. So when we come up from the base layer, we go to the entry, which puts us in air attack one. Just going to kind of reorganize things and make it a little bit clearer to understand here. So essentially, our air attack states are going to look just like the ground attack states. So we need a connection from each of our attacks to the exit on exit time one. So if the animation completes without the attack trigger being set again, we leave the air attack state we leave the air attack state machine. So right click, make transition to exit, air attack two, right click, make transition to exit, click on those, exit time one, transition duration zero, click on the other one, exit time one, transition duration zero. Now air attack one to air attack two, make a transition over here. The requirement, if we add the condition, is of course the attack trigger. The exit time is gonna be 0 0.75 and the transition duration is 0 0.25. So just like with the normal attack chaining, we will exit from the air attack one, starting after 75% through the animation, if we have the attack trigger set. So it's going to look for the attack trigger. If it's set, we move on to attack two. Otherwise, if it reaches the end of the first animation with no attack button being pressed, we just leave the air attack state and we resume uh, falling or rising in the air states substate machine. So hopefully that all makes sense. Basically, we're just re doing a repeat of ground states to ground attack, except now we're in the air. So whether we do a ground attack or an air attack depends on if we were coming from the ground or the air. So let's go into our game and give this a shot. I'm going to jump, press left click to attack. Let's try doing a combo. One, two, one, two, one, two. OK, you know what I think is going on here? Uh, it's that our transition duration is set to 0 0.25 seconds not percentage. So turn off fixed duration for this. It should be percentage. Okay, so now you see 75% through our air attack one, we transition into air attack two. Okay, let's hit play and test it. So one, two, one, two, one, two. So one, two. Okay, looks more correct. Let's try hitting zero here for the transition duration. One, two, one, two, one, one, two, one, two. I think we do want the transition duration 0.25%. Let me just test that one more time and make sure this is working correctly. Yeah, okay. I think that's correct. Okay, so let's test if we can hit the flying enemy with it. Oh, yep. <laughs> I was so confused because he died so quickly. I forgot to set his HP back to uh 50. Let's go to flying eye and yeah, he should have 50 health. Poor guy. Okay, let's hit play and let's go after him again. So we have our 12 hit and our 18 hit. So that seems to be working just fine. 
So let's hit play and give it one more test. We definitely can hit with the attacks, but I do notice our jumping is a little bit clunky at the moment. Maybe we don't have enough aerial movement control for our player. So easy fix. Let's go into player, the prefab, and I'm going to take the air walk speed and let's put it to five for testing. So let's hit play and give it one more shot. Our character is now way more flexible in the air. That might actually be too good at flying. So let's go into play mode and test with the increased movement speed. We can see our character is now really flexible in the air, maybe too flexible, honestly. But we can use this at least to test a few hits on the enemy. So what I do notice is that if the enemy is in the attack state and then we hit him, just like I did there, then we immediately switch to flying hit without exiting the attack properly. And we can see that lock velocity is set to true and can move is set to false. So the can move on exit never actually occurred. So to make sure that the lock velocity and can move actually get set, I'm going to need to add uh, the set pool behavior to the flying hit. So let's take the flying hit, add set pool behavior. We'll do can move, let's say update on state value on enter is false value on exit true. And then set pool behavior, lock movement, value on enter is true, value on exit is false, update on state. Now I think you could definitely make the case that because using this any state transition kind of circumvents the normal exiting of a state machine, that using this might be kind of screwy. And maybe it would be better to have direct connections from each of the states where you can be hidden directly to this so that you exit the state machine properly. I think it's kind of arguable which way is better, but since we already set things up this way, I'm just going to make sure here that those values get updated properly. And so the second Boolean is actually lock velocity. You got to be careful about the naming. So let's hit play and give it a test. I'll jump into the enemy and attack him while he is attacking. But now we can see that our Booleans get updated properly so that we don't accidentally lock the enemy from being able to move after leaving the hit state. So that's pretty much going to be it for setting up the attacks and movement for our player as well as our knight and flying eye enemy. Hopefully at this point you have a really good idea of how to set up enemies that can be hit, animator controllers, transitioning between animations, and all that good stuff.